Ollie, then, I, uh, I gather you are the, the club's player of the month. How do you assess your own com contribution over the last few weeks? Oh, is that for me? That's for you. Oh, well, I didn't know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we've played a lot better than we did, obviously, referring to Tuesday night, um, and not got results, so it just shows uh, football at times is a, is a funny old game. Um, the six games we went without a win, I'd, I don't think we particularly played bad. I think we played we played quite well actually, and a couple of draws, a couple of disappointing losses, obviously. But we've we've regrouped and, and won the last two. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a nice uh, nice thing to pick up. Um, but I'm I'm not playing it down in any way. But I'm literally doing my job for the team and the job I'm asked to do, and, and that's all I'll ever do. I was uh, interested in the psychology of how you lot were after the victory the other day at Bristol City, because seeing Sheffield United win loads of games, you know, in a fairly straightforward way, if I can sort of say it like that, or in a resounding way, um, there's been sort of, there haven't been many kind of lucky wins yet. You lot are seemingly lucky, but you lot were delighted by that. Yeah, I think because um, we've lost games this year against when, when we've played quite well, and, you know, we've seen teams at Bramall Lane celebrate the draws like wins at times and sometimes you look at it as a player from the outside and think is it really that big of a result against us and obviously it is and we just felt the other night we you know we we were not stupid we we knew it wasn't a performance you'd you'd want to look back at to be honest it was a performance it was gritty it was full of experience and and know-how um, and I think we were just delighted to get the three points it was a, a long old journey down there Monday a long day Tuesday it didn't feel as long coming home because, but it was, you know, by the time I got back here, it was three o'clock in the morning. So it was a, a long old day, but well worth it when you come back with the three points. And uh, it won't be one to look at, look back at in the history books, but it will be, you say, it's three points we got out of there and uh, we, we've struggled there in the past. So we were delighted to win the game. Yeah, and it will say W in the, in the, in the column, <laughs> won't it? In the fact that it just helps build foundations game. Like, like, here's the cliche, you know, teams that don't play well that win games. How many times since Tuesday night have you heard that? Uh, quite a lot, obviously, ourselves included. Um, when we've been in this position before, when we've we've been chasing, um, you listen. The, the championship is is full of results at times where you you, you know raise your eyebrows and oh, how did that happen? Um, but yeah, I mean we, we've got a, a real good of group of experienced players who, who've been through it, and sometimes it's not about playing well and it's a results business and. That's what we're, we're here to do. We're here to win. We're not here to play well and, and lose. We're, we're here to play well and win. If it means we play rubbish and win, we'll take that as well. Because mm. there's been some very extraordinary matches in recent weeks, haven't there? So <laughs> high scoring draws, uh, comebacks, obviously the other night for the circumstances of everything that went on down at Ashton Gate. It, it may well have not been resoundingly successful, but it's not been dull for the last five or six weeks. No, we said uh, we should start charging more for tickets at Bramall Lane <laughs> in the last couple of games. Not that that'll go down well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but been Certainly lots of on the cop end, by all accounts, yeah. Yeah, I mean, let, let the fans do what they need to do. Let them create an atmosphere. Let them get behind the team. Because when there is, there is no place like it. Um, when the place is rocking, and that's up to us as players. You know, I, I'm never one to, you know, we, we've, we've got to get the crowd off their feet. And I think, you know, the majority of the time we do do that. I think we're a team that excites. We're a team that want to attack. We're a team that wants to win. We're not a team who wants to grab a goal and just hope for the best. We're, we're a team that want to take the game to the opposition and as you said, the last couple of games at Bramall Lane have, have been really entertaining and uh, hopefully not too many more draws, hopefully the ending wins. Burnley then next. When you were a young lad growing up, obviously you're a Burnley lad, how, how much association, if you like, whether as a fan or as a junior footballer, did you have with, with Burnley? I didn't really because I, I went into the academy at Man United at six year old so I, I was weekends taken away playing for the academy at Man United so in my spare time I did I did go and watch. Uh, I made a season ticket for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I mean obviously with, with my own career that uh, didn't really get a chance to go and watch them much and to be honest I've seen them quite a few times this year and uh, all my friends obviously are, are all massive Burnley fans and they like to let me know how well they're doing and 
looking forward to the game on Saturday. So what's the feedback then? What's their appraisal of Burnley right now then? They're buzzing. I think they, you know, they've been used to a certain way of football under the previous manager and you know, I think for them it's, it's exciting and you know, the, the way the manager's gone in there, the way he's got them playing, the players he's brought in. You know, it's a, it, as a in the town, there's a there's a real sense of excitement, and they think they can achieve good things this year. If a team finishes above Burnley, it seems at the minute like they're probably going to win the league, aren't they? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. If you finish above Burnley, you, you, I think you'll have a good opportunity of going up. So yeah, we we know what what to expect. The as I said, they're the league leaders. They're a good side, but but so are we. We, you know, we don't bow to anybody. They're coming to our home, so we've got to look to impose ourselves on them. I'm sure, equally, if we're talking about phrases, you will have heard "turn the corner" following the two previous results. Does it feel as though, well, the circumstances of the West Brom win? It was a very good win, if you like, and then <laughs> Bristol was a bit more f fortunate, wasn't it? But turn that particular corner. No, well, it, if you'd have been in and around the training ground <clears throat> previous to that, there was no heads down, mopping about. Everybody was was upbeat, and you know, you go back to it all the time. The the injuries are well documented, and you know, some of the lads are out there playing with injuries and, and trying to get through that. And I think if you ask the manager, he's not been able to pick a full strength team since the early weeks of the season. So <laughs> when when we do have a full team, if and when this season at some point, we're going to be a real team to stop. And, you know, hopefully we'll have a um, get through to the break in a healthy position, pick up some results, you know, in the next, what have we got, three games before the break? Yeah, sorry, I thought it was four three games before the break and, and see where we're at when, when we come back from, from the break. It does seem from the outside looking in that given the way the football calendar has had to be in the last two years, that a lot of teams, not just Sheffield United, are almost looking at that international break and let's try and get there, let's try and get there because then everybody gets the chance for a rest and, and it's not really stopped for all those circumstances. Clearly it's the World Cup now for Championship and, and Prem but ultimately it's still all kind of bunched together and that's why teams are limping towards those dates, those cut-off dates. Yeah, I think it, it goes back to the the summer of Covid as such. I, I don't think there's been a proper a break as such for, for a period for players to have a rest and you know, for myself, I mean, I think, I uh, can't remember the last time uh, I missed a game, to be honest. But there's, you know, there's a lot of walking wounded out there, there's a lot of tired bodies, and that, it's just part and parcel of it. We, you know, we, we're paid to play football, and, you know, you've got to get yourself in, in a fit state and get yourself ready to go at any opportunity. And as I said, we, we ourselves, we're looking at the next three games. Can we, can we finish with three wins and go into the break? and? If we do that, we could possibly be top of the league and, and sitting in a healthy position with, you know, let's be honest, players who would get in the majority of every championship starting 11. Does it seem as though, or am I just overreacting, that the injuries in the last couple of years are a bit more kind of regular and acute for the reasons that you've just discussed in your experience? Because of the way the calendars had to change? Because, you know, all footballers uh, have been in good shape. You've got to be to play football, but yeah. these injuries are very regular. Yeah, and it seems as though it's big injuries, isn't it? It's not just uh, I'll be out for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks here, and <laughs> the injury, especially the ones we've had, of you know, you, you look at it and the long-term injuries, and what can you do? You, <laughs> it's part and parcel of football. It just seems to be that there's more and more injuries happening or whatever. But um, we'll just get on with it. We'll keep plugging away, and the lads who are out there will we'll do everything we can do to make sure that. When we get those lads back, we're in a position to kick on.